Episode 10, we're in a double digits, Disrupt Education. Isaiah Maker in the house. What's up, what's up? Entrepreneur, let's go. What are you all about, man? All right, so technically, I started off as more so doing spoken word poetry, and obviously attended Oak Park and River Forest High School from 2005 to 2009. Originally, used to have the fear of public speaking, had social anxiety, hated poetry, joined the spoken word club and it transformed me, but then I realized these skills that I gained from performing were also utilized in the classroom in other ways. So when I went to the University of Illinois Chicago, I conducted research on how poetry could be used in the classroom to enhance and sustain student engagement. From the results of my research, it proved how you can use uh, performance skills for teaching, you could use performance skills in the workplace. And I was like, you know what? I want to start doing this. I want to start showing people and training and developing them on how they can take these skills of performance and these skills of communication and transfer it over into whatever it is that they're doing. Right, that's amazing, Mm because what what you have blossomed into this section of HR, really, Mm -hmm. and looking into how companies hire, um, they want outside the box, yet they don't really want to go outside mm-hmm. the box. And, and you're kind of in that realm. Um, tell us, uh, like, how, how is that changing? Like, you, you mentioned the teaching piece, right? Uh-huh. Um, and how teachers are kind of putting a box in education. Yeah. Uh, and you're working with a few <laughs> colleges and such about that. Um, how can it be different? Yeah, so, like, with me, for instance, I, it's tough for me to sit down for a long period of time mm-hmm. and just to listen to someone lecture. And I also... My best creative thinking comes from movement. So the class I taught at Roosevelt University from the research that I did was how teaching in essence is a performance. So what I did, instead of presenting my research, I performed it. Right. Went over the nonverbal and verbal communication skills that I used through my performance slash presentation. And these were undergraduate freshmen who were learning to become educators. So it's introducing them to this new way of how teaching is a performance, but how can you use poetic devices and right. certain nonverbal communication skills such as your hands. I'm do, using yeah, it right, right now. It's, right. it's tough not to do it. <laughs> I need how, can a mic. You, <laughs> how can you use these skills and these tactics to engage some of the most disengaged students because it's not necessarily the content. It's how the delivery of the content right. is what dictates whether someone's engaged or not. So after that first day, um, broke them off into groups, math educators, history educators, early childhood and I gave them the task of teaching a lesson plan, five to 10 minutes, Mm -hmm. anything that is in accordance to whatever subject you want to teach. However, you have to incorporate metaphors, similes, alliteration, all these performance techniques. So the following week, we had a group of educators who taught about history, Mm -hmm. Boston Tea Party, they taught it in storytelling form. So that was one aspect of spoken word. Second group, Uh, math educators. Now, Mm -hmm. they taught about how to simplify fractions using metaphors and analogies. Wow. And they used like these dinner table settings. So, Mm -hmm. if 20 people come over for for dinner and you have pies, how do you have to divide the... So, creating Uh, this... It's authentic learning in there, too. And it creates... So, metaphors and analogies create visuals. So, then the students have a better understanding of, okay, now I know how to go about simplifying it, but it's also this realistic... Mm-hmm. application because there might be a time you're throwing a party you right. have to figure it out how many right. guests how much food then the last group I think it was early childhood they mm-hmm. wrote a rap yeah a verse and a hook on the rules of playing freeze tag uh. so they considered their audience mm-hmm. early childhood so they make sure okay if we're uh, going to teach early childhood students yeah we have to make sure it's fine have this jingle into it same with the history having the storytelling and then even with math because right. students that's your audience the teacher, in essence, is an artist. Right. The front of the classroom is a stage, and your lesson plan, that's like your spoken word piece. That is powerful. And the that dean is. of the uh, university came in there, and he said, man, I've never seen them engaged like this. And I'm thinking, right. like, okay, that was me just piloting this. Right, right. What else can I do? How can I expand mm-hmm. and take this sort of philosophy or this theory on how these skills are transferable right, and right. create an extensive curriculum so that we can retrain Absolutely. what it means to teach? Yeah. Because yeah. I think there's one thing to teach and there's one thing to engage. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. That's amazing. What I like, uh, you know, I hear visual and, and authentic mm-hmm. in there, right? Like, so you're, you're creating, you're using your art and you're adapting. So I go right to math. My dad was mm-hmm. a math teacher. Okay. I get, my audience knows this. My, he's been a math teacher for 32 years. He's retired. Mm-hmm. It's more than just X, mm-hmm. right? There's, there's beauty in actually the equation. 
but most people don't see it. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Uh, yeah. The Boston Tea Party thing, like you know, that's that's incredible. Mm -hmm. So you've also branched out now, and you're looking yes. at that businesses mm -hmm. who are looking at hiring people who may not necessarily have the exact crisp, clean resume and, and kind of giving them that different lens, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about that. Yeah, so I don't know if I mentioned what I did at Granger Industrial Supply, if mm -hmm. anyone's familiar with the, mm -hmm. that company. So I came in, they were hosting a regional leadership forum for an organization called the Point Foundation. Right. And when I came in, I didn't know there were going to be employees from Granger that were going to participate in my workshop. So I did two different um, workshops. One was a community uh, poem workshop, one was an individual what it's like poem workshop. So this macro micro approach. And I'm also touching on the same, like I said, some of the nonverbal communication skills, verbal communication skills that are needed in order to create these poems. So let's say it's a group of us, let's say it's imaginary four of us. I know there's only two right, of us, right. but let's say there's two more people <laughs> in front of us. Each of us have a sheet of paper in front with a line of poetry mm -hmm. that begins it. I gave each member 90 seconds to come up with another line that relates to the previous line after those 90 seconds is out we rotate mm -hmm. the sheets of paper right right and we did maybe 15 rounds of it and i had music playing in the background but the yeah. music play was used for two different purposes mm -hmm. one it could be used as a guidance and reference for you to write yeah but then the other it could be used as a distraction so i taught them how can you create projects within mm -hmm. time sensitive settings mm -hmm as well as these distractions, but then right. also this intuitive creative thinking without having any game plan. These, these people who did these poems, they've mm -hmm. never worked together before. Right, right. They didn't know much about one yeah. another. They didn't know each other's skill sets. So when the 15 rounds was up, mm -hmm. they shared these poems. They were absolutely amazing. Yeah. And I remember the looks on their faces. Yeah. They were stunned because I asked them, I said, who in here writes poetry? Mm -hmm. No one raised a hand. A lot of them said, hey, I never, I'm not into poetry. One teacher actually ruined it for me. <laughs> he said a teacher ruined it because yeah. the teacher, I guess, put him on the spot and kept pushing him and he, he right, wasn't comfortable. Right. Yeah. And that stuck with him. He said, yeah. this stuck with me for 20, 30 years. He said, this was the first time where I actually really was receptive of it. He said, you actually helped me change my perception of it right. from what I, that, that one experience that I had. So I had them get outside of their heads mm -hmm. and executing ideas. And I said that the time frame was 90 seconds on purpose. If I gave you all like 10 minutes, a lot of y'all would be standing there waiting like, like man, what, I don't know what, what to doing? think. So with these, uh, with these companies and organizations, uh, the manager of corporate communications came up to me from Granger and he mm -hmm. said, you should consider doing this yeah. for other companies because he said things like this in terms of this creative thinking and also getting to know each other's skill set and mm -hmm. just each other personally, it takes it could take so much time to That's do that but he said powerful. you just executed this within less than two hours right i mean you hit on like soft skills mm -hmm. uh, constructivism like all these things mm -hmm. and creativity getting people out of their comfort zone while they're still kind of comfort mm -hmm. and then disassembling it at the end and saying okay this is what happened this is what happens and then i didn't yeah. mention, i forgot i didn't mention the individual poems mm -hmm. so we had like i said we're at the, the macro with the community mm -hmm. then the micro so what role as an individual do you play within these communities so right. we had Employees write about what it's like to be, let's say, harassed at the workplace and not be able to tell your coworkers, mm -hmm. or what it's like to be adopted from another country, mm -hmm. having to come in and you know having right. to learn so many different, different things. Lenses. Yeah, and once they wrote these individual poems and they shared them, one of the uh, members that were part of the group they said, "Wow, I've I've known this person." Yeah. For you, well, at least I thought I did. Right. I did not know this about them, and then wow. once I have this understanding, I could treat them differently and kind of, mm -hmm. in a good way, not like oh, sure, you know, yeah. isolated way. But now, now that I have this understanding of who you are as a person, and how it feels to be this particular person, mm -hmm. it's like now we can. It's easier for us to work together. It's, it's something right. called uncertainty reduction theory. Mm -hmm. When you can reduce someone's uncertainty of you, it's mm -hmm. easier for you to build and establish a relationship with those. Individuals. Let me take that theory now and that could transition <laughs> into mm -hmm. like say high school, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like we're not letting people be comfortable uh -huh. in different things like that. So I, I want to lead into the next question is, you know, as a, a system that we're in mm -hmm. and, and you were obviously somebody said get on stage and you're yes. like, nope, <laughs> I'm not going to. Mm -hmm. And now you're on stage every day. Mm -hmm. What would it like, how would you visualize what you're doing being transformed into a high school or, or mm -hmm. into an educational system? 
I would definitely say something where the teacher is also immersed in the work and not necessarily just delegating yeah. or even someone who's more standoffish and kind of letting the students kind of curate their own experience. Mm -hmm. I think oftentimes the teachers and educators were taught to micromanage right, in right. a sense. And I think when you micromanage, you're also indicating that you don't believe they're capable of yeah. doing whatever is assigned. Right. So doing something obviously that's also project based team I, I call it team based and project paced. You see I'm Ooh, integrating yeah. my like rhyme. So, so <laughs> entrepreneur. Yeah. That's so awesome. doing something where obviously they're in teams so they're getting to know one another but then at the same time they're also learning different styles of other right. students. So one student might be good at something that's hands on or maybe detail oriented. The mm -hmm. other one might be a better presenter. So how do you leverage the yeah. skill sets of your students in a way where they all flourish, but then at the same time as an educator, how would you know what their skill sets are? You have to somehow get to know them. And one thing that I'm right. pushing for, hopefully one day I can get yeah. you to do this, oh, yeah, yeah. a teacher poetry slam. Yeah, yeah. So the students are also getting a better understanding of who's teaching them. Right. Because I feel like students, they look at teachers as these hierarchical figures, like <laughs> they're teaching me, but at the same time, right. a, a teacher is also a student. I love learning. And I feel them. like a student is also a teacher. Yeah. So we're ultimately we're on the same level. Right. But I think it's this perception of what education has somewhat created where it's like, oh, you're supposed to be listening from me. Mm -hmm. I can't learn anything from you, so you sit back and I'll t you know, run the it's class. A, um, it's a control versus creative mm -hmm. kind of, it's, it's that fight all mm -hmm. the time. Are we, are we allowing students to learn or are we telling them what to learn? So I didn't mention I'm the spoke word teaching artist at Percy Jordan right. Middle School spoke word coordinator mm -hmm. with Oak Park F Foundation and with the residencies, well, as artists, we go in and teach the seventh graders poetry. What I'm right. trying to make a requirement mm -hmm. is for the teachers yeah. to share a poem Yeah. because typically after the residencies, the seventh grade one is they go on to do the seventh grade poetry slam in the assembly. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, I want the teachers right. to participate in this as well because then you get to see them from a different perspective, mm -hmm. not just as a teacher, but I'm also one of you. I'm doing right. the work as right. well as assigning it. But ultimately, we're sharing the same, we're sharing pieces of ourselves right. that typically, you know, the first week of school, you have syllabus week, they might do some icebreakers, but right. it's like, come on, it shouldn't, it shouldn't stop I would there. love that to be just a grand, mm -hmm. big thing, right? Instead of, okay, because, you know, you come in the first day, eight different syllabi, here's the rules over and over and over again. <laughs> and it's like the icebreakers, like, I mean, come on, like, do you really think you're going to remember that throughout the whole... Right, right. I, I feel like maybe maybe once even a week or two weeks, something where you're getting to yeah. know that it could be something funny. It doesn't have to be right. like go around the room and say your favorite. Like it doesn't have to be anything like that, but yeah. something fun and subtle. Right. And something that also won't get on the students now is like, oh, here we go with this again. Right. You know, that's authentic. Right? Exactly. Like you, exactly. You, yeah. That, that I think with what you're, you're right on with teachers actually being involved mm -hmm. because if we're sitting back and we're like, go do this. No one respects that, mm -hmm. right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's just like a manager or a boss. It's like, go do that, and I'm going to go play golf. Yeah, and it's interesting. Yeah. I'm glad you made that comparison, mm -hmm. how the correlation of things that are going on in school and the workplace, they're dealing with a lot of the same challenges, yeah. whether it's engagement, micromanagement, mm -hmm. and not even knowing or understanding who you're working with. I'm thinking, like, that should be the foundation right. of any job. Like, how do you not know who you're working with, uh, what type of skill sets they have with their background? Once you know that, mm -hmm. it's easier to execute whatever project or whatever assignment you have. Right. Because you guys have an understanding. It's almost like a football team where you have all these players, but you don't even know what their skill sets are, right, what position right. they play. Like, that's yeah. weird. Isn't it? Yeah. That's the way. We're siloed. <laughs> so siloed. Exactly. Especially, like, in the high school realm. Mm -hmm. how, can we, how can we make that happen? It's a pleasure having you, man. Oh, thank Isaiah you. I really Baker. appreciate it. Thank you. Episode 10, all his socials right around here. Um, dude, really appreciate it. Um, check out his website. It's IsaiahMaker.com. Uh, yep. And there's everything out there. Uh, you're going places, man. Yeah, no, thank you. I really appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate you disrupting education, too. Thank you. Love it. Love <laughs> it. All right, man. Stay tuned. We're going to have some fun. Uh, we got a lot more coming up on shows. Keep disrupting.